Welcome to my anime recap channel. In this video, I will be recapping the anime series, Goblin Slayer Season 2. As spring arrives, Goblin Slayer returns to his old village, which goblins had attacked years ago. It's now deserted, and he silently surveys the area. In the frontier town, priestess and high elf archer watch as many new people sign up to become adventurers. They share a laugh about Priestess being a senior adventurer now as she starts her second year. She mentions her upcoming promotion review. They also receive a letter from Noble Fencer Nawa, female merchant. She informs them about her plan to create an adventurer's training camp for the newcomers. As they discuss the camp's potential, dwarf shaman and lizard priest arrive, warmly greeted by their fellow adventurers, and the rookies look up to them. Without fail, Goblin Slayer makes his characteristic entrance, which startles the rookies but garners a warm welcome from his veteran peers. In his usual fashion, he heads directly to Guild Girl to take on Goblin Slaying quests. He also requests a list of quests taken by the new rookies, a move that receives Guild Girl's approval. In preparation, he acquires a substantial number of potions and antidotes. This action leaves the rookies both in awe and a touch of fear for the man, as is often the case. While labeling the potions, Goblin Slayer and Lizard Priest offer valuable advice to a rookie named Rhea Fighter. They recommend that her fledgling party should start with small steps, perhaps hunting giant rats before delving into goblin slaying. However, as they head out, a red-haired rookie rudely bumps into Priestess. When he brushes her off indifferently, there's something about his appearance that triggers a memory within her. After a long day of goblin slaying, Goblin Slayer returns to the guild to file his report. However, his attention is drawn to a figure huddled on a bench, and he readies himself for a potential goblin encounter. To his surprise, it's the impolite rookie from earlier. This young wizard expresses a desire to learn goblin slaying from Goblin Slayer. Yet Goblin Slayer declines the request recognizing the rookie's inexperience and lack of attentiveness. Instead, he advises the newcomer to start small by slaying rats. Guild Girl, who takes Goblin Slayer's report, suggests that he should help the young wizard for the night since he can't afford a room. Reluctantly, Goblin Slayer agrees and takes him to the farm. At the farm, Goblin Slayer is warmly welcomed by Cow Girl, who humorously introduces herself as Goblin Slayer's wife, much to the amazement of Wizard Boy. Although Cow Girl's uncle initially hesitates to let the rude rookie spend the night, he eventually relents. This decision comes after Goblin Slayer promises to keep an eye on Wizard Boy and assures Cow Girl's uncle that he'll get some much needed rest himself, alleviating the farmer's concerns about Goblin Slayer overworking himself. The following morning, Goblin Slayer escorts Wizard Boy back to the guild. Once again, he advises the young wizard to start with simpler challenges like hunting rats. Meanwhile, Goblin Slayer finds himself dealing with the consequences of indulging in Cow Girl's hearty breakfast, suffering from the effects of overeating. Goblin Slayer reunites with his party and learns that Priestess failed her promotion exam due to her inexperience compared to the seasoned adventurers, which slightly affects her success rate. The veterans in the party advise Priestess to team up with fellow rookie friends like Rookie Warrior and Apprentice Cleric, or even form a party with the new rookies to develop her leadership skills. However, Wizard Boy overhears her failure and mocks her loudly, accusing her of hiding in a corner while the veterans do all the work. As she attempts to defend herself, Lizard Priest reveals Wizard Boy's insults, emphasizing that it's an insult to all priests including himself and others in the guild. This revelation gains support from other priest classes in the guild, along with their friends. They see Wizard Boy as a know-nothing-know-it-all rookie and dismiss him as yet another inexperienced newcomer, much to his frustration. In response, he declares his intention to slay goblins and disregards Goblin Slayer and his advice, making his stance clear. Immediately, Female Knight bursts in with her usual loud and spirited style, while Heavy Warrior quickly offers apologies to everyone. She boldly dares Wizard Boy to prove his words and insists that he should take on Goblin Slaying. However, to the surprise of everyone, it's Priestess who will guide him on this venture. 
Upon their arrival at the construction site for the training center set up by female merchant, the responsibility of leading their new goblin slaying quest with the overconfident novice, wizard boy, falls into priestess's hands as per their prior agreement. They meet the foreman of the worksite, who happens to be a relative or an acquaintance of dwarf shaman. The foreman brings to their attention a mausoleum plagued by a recent goblin infestation. He also shares concerning information about a promising adventurer party he previously dispatched to deal with the goblins. Unfortunately, that group disappeared, and the goblins made off with their tools. These ominous events lead the foreman to suspect the presence of something or someone more sinister guiding the goblins and assisting in the elimination of the adventurer party. As they gather information and strategize, Wizard Boy becomes increasingly frustrated and vocal about his desire to rescue any potential survivors from the ill-fated party, loudly expressing his discontent. High Elf Archer and Dwarf Shaman, however, scold him and suggest that while the leaders and fighters plan, the scouts and support team should prepare their supplies. Despite this advice, Wizard Boy remains in annoyance and shows little respect for Priestess's leadership. Upon reaching the mausoleum, the party gets ready for their mission. Lizard Priest offers his encouragement to Priestess for her role as the leader, and everyone else shows support. While Priestess organizes the team, Wizard Boy maintains his arrogant demeanor and continues to grumble. At this point, both Priestess and High Elf Archer take a moment to playfully tease him about his inability to listen. Since he didn't bring a sachet to mask his scent, he ends up having to use Goblin Slayers, Goblin Guts, to cover himself, much to the humiliation of the cocky rookie. The quest begins inside the mausoleum, and the vanguard, composed of goblin slayer and lizard priest, allows high elf archer to quickly secure the doors with wedges to prevent an overwhelming assault. Priestess instructs the group to conserve their spells for later. The party proceeds meticulously, clearing each room with caution. However, wizard boy's impatience gets the better of him and he breaks formation, stumbling into an obvious goblin trap that loudly exposes their position. This leads Wizard Boy to the distressing discovery of a goblin torturing Acolyte, the only survivor of her ill-fated party. In horror, Wizard Boy uses his fireball spell against the lone goblin, using up his only spell, but it reveals the rest of the horde and their troll leader. Realizing he's fallen into another trap, Wizard Boy frantically warns the rest of the party to stay back, but they arrive just in time to rescue him and Acolyte. Faced with overwhelming odds, Priestess returns leadership of the party to Goblin Slayer. He quickly devises a plan for them to retreat, causing the troll to go berserk and accidentally kill some of its own Goblin soldiers because Goblin Slayer sets it ablaze with a Molotov cocktail. Hurrying forward, Priestess and the others discover a room where they can regroup and assess Acolyte's condition. While she's seriously hurt and traumatized, her life isn't in danger. Dwarf Shaman suggests not using, heal, on her to preserve Priestess's spells. Wizard Boy, recognizing that his actions cost Priestess her leadership test and his prior criticism about her, hiding in the back, was unfounded, attempts to apologize. However, their conversation is cut short as Goblin Slayer and High Elf Archer return, with the fiery troll in pursuit. Recognizing the troll's regenerative abilities, Goblin Slayer requests Priestess to cast Holy Light and urges Dwarf Shaman to conjure rain with his Kelpie spirit. Blinded and soaked, the troll is vulnerable. Goblin Slayer takes a bomb filled with saltpeter, which, when ignited, causes the troll's skin to crack apart due to the rapid temperature change from the water. Seizing the moment, Goblin Slayer and Lizard Priest finish off the troll, leaving Wizard Boy in awe. Despite the incredible feat, Goblin Slayer remains focused on slaying goblins. Later that night at the guild, the party celebrates their victory over the troll and imparts more words of wisdom to Wizard Boy for his future quests. High Elf Archer and the others continue to offer their encouragement to Priestess as she faces the challenges of her temporary leadership role. Meanwhile, Acolyte's fate becomes known. Priestess shares that Acolyte has returned to the Temple of the Earth Mother for healing and is contemplating her future once she recovers. However, Wizard Boy, in his typical loud manner, interjects with a rather harsh perspective. 
He mentions that Acolyte's defeat at the hands of goblins will be something she'll never live down, considering how society generally views such losses to goblins. Then, he discloses the source of his negative attitude. It turns out he is the younger sibling of the deceased wizard, who was one of the ill-fated members of Priestess's initial party. His sister's demise, caused by a poisoned goblin blade, led to her being ridiculed by those who once praised her. Upon hearing Wizard Boy's emotional outburst, Goblin Slayer arranges for the unconscious young wizard to have a room and then departs. As he leaves, he crosses paths with Spearman and Witch, who pick up on his troubled demeanor. In a quiet alley, Goblin Slayer engages in some self-reproach. He blames himself for not being able to save Wizard's older sister a year ago and for having to end her life mercifully, which ultimately deprived Wizard Boy of his beloved sibling. Recap of the anime series Goblin Slayer Season 2 then heads into the new training center. Female Knight trains Rhea Fighter in the ways of the sword but becomes too overzealous and intense, not letting up on the new rookie even a little as she begs for some breathing room. Watching on, Rookie Warrior and Wizard Boy worry about how they'll be treated as Spearman arrives to train them and decides to seriously train them when they take shots at his abysmal luck with women. In another area, Goblin Slayer trains Apprentice Cleric and Druid Girl with slings in a much more beginner-friendly way than the rest of his peers, as the young girls are more successful than the rest, much to Guild Girl's approval. As Cow Girl and Priestess arrive with lunch for the rookies, the tired rookies take a break with Priestess and discuss their careers and dreams. Rhea Fighter desires to break Rhea's stereotypes and become a real warrior and not another scout or thief, while the rookie duo remark that while they are okay with their slow and safe take that has helped them survive their first year, they are hoping to start picking up the base. While Priestess is pleased with their dreams and goals, seeing as how the rest of the rookies see her as a rising star among them, Wizard Boy is still dismissive until Priestess reminds him of his deceased older sister's dream of becoming a dragon slayer. As they continue on their break, Spearman invites Goblin Slayer on a guy's night out with him and Heavy Warrior. That night, Goblin Slayer heads out to the Broken Axe Tavern as Cowgirl pokes fun at his play date but is happy that he is interacting with his peers. At the tavern, the trio of veterans begin to discuss the current state of events with the rookies and the state of the world. While Spearman and Heavy Warrior try to make some more casual, Guy talk, Goblin Slayer is silent and gives his usual one-word answers, much to their amusement and annoyance. Afterwards, the trio begins to discuss what they plan for the future, as unlike the rookies, they have already gotten to the top but realize there is so much more they want to do with their lives. Goblin Slayer, however, remains quiet, as he appears to silently contemplate his life as well. The next day, Dwarf Shaman tutors Wizard Boy in the magic arts at Goblin Slayer's request. While the headstrong magic school dropout tries to maintain his haughty and arrogant nature, he eventually breaks down and admits he only knows one spell, Fireball. Dwarf Shaman instantly berates the boy for not using his imagination and begins explaining how the boy can do more with less. Elsewhere, Priestess has lunch with Lizard Priest and Rhea Fighter. The trio eventually gets to how Priestess is trying to build her experience with her budding leadership. Excited, Rhea Fighter suggests Priestess take the other rookies on a mini-quest as party leader and quickly assembles the other three rookies. At Lizard Priest's urging, Priestess agrees and goes off, as Lizard Priest looks on, happy she is among friends her age. That evening, Goblin Slayer and Cowgirl discuss their feelings about how the training center is built on the grounds of what was once their home village, destroyed years ago in a goblin raid. While Cowgirl admits to having memories of home, she accepts that times change and the land has to move on much like he has changed from non-stop goblins slaying to now going out with colleagues and training rookies. While agreeing, Goblin Slayer admits he is torn as he leaves to train the rookies. As he leaves, Cowgirl displays sadness that her love has yet to truly move on from his traumatic past, despite his recent steps in improvement. At the training center's outskirts, 
A laborer finds a goblin and kills him before he is overpowered by more. The rookies hear the cries and wonder what is going on as Goblin Slayer prepares to go hunting. Recap of the anime series Goblin Slayer Season 2 heads forward with a surprise attack from goblins at the training grounds. Goblin Slayer immediately goes into action and places Rookie Warrior in charge of the group of Rookie's defense formation, ordering them to stay put, play defensive, and retreat should he not return in a set amount of time. Wizard Boy quickly whips the scared rookies into formation as Rhea Fighter and Apprentice Cleric get ready to lend their support in case of emergency. On the hunt, Goblin Slayer finds the overnight workers killed and runs into Priestess as well as fellow Silver Rank Spearmen, Witch, and Heavy Warrior, who are shocked to see the goblins coordinated such a bold and secretive surprise attack. Quickly, High Elf Archer, Dwarf Shaman, and Lizard Priests reveal themselves and begin to formulate a plan of counterattack and defense for the two teams of rookies. Goblin Slayer decides to lead a team into the tunnels to slay the horde, while Heavy Warrior remains behind to protect the rookies, and High Elf Archer runs ahead to warn the town of the attack. However, Priestess immediately deduces that the goblins are targeting the rookies who went home for the night and volunteers to lead her rookie friends on a rescue mission to save them. Though the veterans admit the plan is excellent, they are worried about sending the rookies alone, but trust in Priestess to lead them. Remaining at the training grounds, Heavy Warrior takes on a hobgoblin, while the goblins indeed attack the rookies who have already left for home, as the Priestess deduced. As they are almost overwhelmed, Priestess and her team arrive with Priestess and Apprentice Cleric administering much-needed first aid, while Rookie Warrior and Rhea Fighter hold the goblins off. With the horde being larger than they thought, Wizard Boy remembers Dwarf Shaman's advice and readies the team for his spell as he casts a very loud shout spell. This is heard all the way back to the training grounds by Heavy Warrior, which scares the goblins into retreating. With their goal of rescue achieved, the priestess orders a strategic withdrawal to get the injured to safety. Underneath the earth, the goblin slayer leads the veterans against the goblin horde, who are led by a shaman. Though High Elf Archer, who managed to warn the town and return in time, is annoyed, they rest and let priestess go off alone with no veteran help. The rest tell her to have faith in priestess. As the horde is larger than anticipated, Goblin Slayer devises a plan with the tunnels and dwarf shaman spells. Using his knowledge of the area, he has Lizard Priest cast Roar to force the goblins into retreat, and has Dwarf Shaman use Tunnel to bring the roof down, which opens the lake above them into the tunnels, drowning the horde. The next day, Priestess is promoted to steal rank for her rescue mission by Guild Girl and Inspector, much to her party's approval and praise. Outside, Goblin Slayer sees Wizard Boy off as he decides to travel around and hone his skills, finally accepting everyone's advice that he may not be as ready as he thought. As he leaves, he moves on from his older sister's death and decides that instead of just slaying goblins to avenge her, he'll achieve her dreams of becoming a dragon slayer for her. Rhea Fighter decides to tag along on his adventure much to his chagrin which causes Goblin Slayer to laugh out loud and gives them words of advice and a potential contact. As they leave for their adventure, Cow Girl comes up to Goblin Slayer and notices he's in better spirits now, seeing that he may have made some peace with his past, which makes her happy. However, she playfully chides him for draining the lake from their ruined home village as they go back home. In the bustling guild, a mail carrier delivers messages to the adventurers, including one for the High Elf Archer. Upon reading it, she announces, It's time to get married! Much to her party's shock. She explains the upcoming wedding and invites the entire party, leading Priestess to wonder if she'll retire from adventuring. However, after some deduction, the party realizes the High Elf Archer's older sister, the Forest Princess, is the one getting married. Goblin Slayer tries to avoid going, but Priestess pressures him to attend his teammate's sister's wedding and finish his goblin slaying quests to keep the town safe while he's gone. Excited about an elven wedding, 
Guild Girl accepts the High Elf Archer's invitation as her plus one, encouraged by Inspector to take this. Vacation Inspector then hands Goblin Slayer some emergency Goblin Slaying quests to complete before the event, as the High Elf Archer tries to explain what an elephant is. In a church deep in the forest, Goblin Slayer and his team fight off a group of goblins and rescue the nuns who are being held captive. The High Elf Archer checks the area to make sure all the goblins are dead, while the Dwarf Shaman searches the ruined library for anything that can be saved from the old books. In the main room, the Lizard Priest comforts the nuns and offers them words of hope and encouragement. Priestess uses her new miracle, Purify, to heal the nuns and her team. The Dwarf Shaman then shows them some ancient tablets that the nuns were studying and suggests that they should be given to experts who study these things. At their rustic farm, Cowgirl guides the cows towards their barn as dusk falls. Goblin Slayer returns home, and Cowgirl greets him with concern, checking for any injuries. They discuss the upcoming elven wedding, and Cowgirl recalls the childhood promise of marriage, which Goblin Slayer denies. Despite this, he invites her as his plus one to the wedding, delighting her. The next day, the group arrives in Watertown. The women depart to shop for wedding gifts, while dwarf shaman and lizard priests seek lodging. Goblin Slayer entrusts the tablets to Sword Maiden for deciphering. Sword Maiden promises to investigate them and reveals Noble Fencer's progress towards recovery, expressing gratitude for Goblin Slayer's assistance during the winter. As Goblin Slayer prepares to depart, he expresses concern for Sword Maiden's mental well-being and urges her to remain vigilant against the goblins much to her disappointment that he cannot stay longer. Informed of his destination, the elven lands, she cautions him about recent attacks on ships en route to the elven realm, suspecting goblin involvement. Embarking on their journey via a rented raft, the group ventures towards the elven forests amidst the breathtaking scenery. A sense of unease creeps in as they notice the towering cliffs that hem in the narrowing canal and the eerie silence that envelopes the forest. Swiftly, the adventurers deduce an impending ambush and assume defensive positions. As the party is under attack on their raft, goblins bombard them with rocks, but Priestess protects everyone with her magical shield. Goblin Slayer fights back with his powerful spear launcher, while Lizard Priest and Dwarf Shaman navigate the raft through the chaos. Suddenly, the raft stops. The sneaky goblins have blocked the river, trapping the party. But just as things look bleak, Priestess unveils her new trick. She casts a spell that destroys the dam, releasing the rushing water. Lizard Priest roars with fury, sending the goblins scattering in fear. The raft speeds away, carrying the party to safety. The women change into swimsuits to let their dresses dry and dive into the river for a refreshing swim and some fishing for dinner. Meanwhile, Goblin Slayer and the guys set up camp and strategize their next move taking down the goblin nest. As they enjoy their delicious meal, High Elf Archer gives the party a crash course on elven courtship customs, prepping them for the upcoming wedding. The next morning, the groom-to-be, Shining Helm, strolls into camp, eager to see his bride. He questions Goblin Slayer about the goblins they encountered earlier, and Goblin Slayer confirms his guard successfully eliminated them. In his excitement, Shining Helm bursts into the ladies' tent, oblivious to their slumber, causing a bit of a scene. Heading to the elven village, Shining Helm warns about an increase in goblin activity, hoping the legendary, Orkbalg, can lend his expertise. However, he also cautions them about the one who stops the waters, approaching their village, a growing threat. High Elf Archer welcomes the party to her beautiful home, and as they unpack, Lizard Priest and Dwarf Shaman head out to gather food, while Kyle Girl, Guild Girl, and Priestess head to freshen up. Alone with Goblin Slayer, High Elf Archer playfully transforms one of his bolus into a toy. Suddenly, her elder sister, the Forest Princess, appears to greet her and Goblin Slayer. But as their eyes meet, Goblin Slayer recognizes her attendant as the elf captive he rescued on his very first adventure with his original party. Overwhelmed with emotion, the elf captive bursts into tears as Goblin Slayer reveals he has eliminated all of her tormentors. Alone, Forest Princess admits she is not happy with High Elf Archer being an adventurer and wishes she would come back home to be safe with her, 
as well as admit she's not happy that she's adventuring with a dwarf. As High Elf Archer defends her choices, Forest Princess questions why she is so intent on staying with Goblin Slayer. However, as the sisters trade polite barbs, the ground begins to shake and Goblin Slayer swiftly arrives with her weapons and his guards Forest Princess as High Elf Archer goes off to confront. The one who stops the waters. Mokul Mirban the large sawpod creature. Remembering High Elf Archer's description of an elephant, Goblin Slayer wonders aloud if Mokul Mirban is said elephant only to be corrected by High Elf Archer. Like and comment if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for more anime recaps. And tell me what anime recap you'd like to see next in the comments below.